Welcome to the Ricky Matthews Show. I hope you're having a great day. This is uh, the show that every single day celebrates the men and women who are making this state such a great place to live, work, and play. Hey, I want to, we're going to jump right into my guest because I read a couple of headlines recently about my friend Steve Azar. And I thought we better we better call Steve back and uh, get updated on this latest news about him. But before we go any further, let me just say good morning to my friend Steve. How you doing, buddy? Brother Ricky, I love the name of the show. I'm going to have you on my show soon, so I want the whole skinny there. But uh, long time coming. I think it's more global, you know, and yeah. I think a wise move. Well, th- well, thank you. I mean, you know, look, people g- know what Coast View is. We had over 800. Ch- you know, conversations, but for new people who are coming into the show, they didn't know what view meant, V-U-E, a visual perception of a region, a French term, <laughs> but uh, they tended to say Ricky show. That's just the reality of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. after a lot of internal conversation, we decided from a marketing point of view, we'll make it a little bit easier. And that's that's how we came about. Um, you have In a Mississippi Minute, but that's a song written by Steve Azar. So there's not necessarily a lot of confusion about that, is there? Yeah, a older song uh, that, you know, you always want to find a home for your song uh, so you can feel like it grew up and you're proud of it like a child. So, uh, yeah, In a Mississippi Minute made a lot of sense. Uh, it's uh, a lot slower paced than a New-, a New York Minute, which was the thought process. Uh, sometimes it drive you crazy how kind of, I guess, um, what do you call it? Like uh, deliberate we can be. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. anyway, yeah, we found a home for it. So it was, it's been in the sixth year now. It's just a blast. What a blast. So, so cool. And I, I tell you, I really enjoy your show. You have such a wide variety of, of guests. And, and if we have time, we actually come back to that in a second. But I saw two headlines. One headline had to do with the Mississippi Music Foundation. Um, they're wanting to retire you. <laughs> we'll talk about why that's funny here in a second. But also the headline on Mississippi Super Talk Mississippi News that Mississippi Steve Azar has been selected as a mentor mentor for the new TV show Banded. Um, let's start with uh, this Lifetime Achievement Award that you got. Yeah, I'm going to go lay down and I'm dug a hole about ten feet deep. I'm going to jump in it. If you can come over and cover me up, uh, <laughs> no, it's a nice thing. Uh, they're really, it's a great organization. I mean, they, they were in the Lander Center. They had a lot of seats, a lot of butts in the seats. Um, and just getting, you know, being honored with that. I just think that it's a, it's a really nice thing. And always grateful for our peers to rep, uh, recognize some of the things we've done in our lives. But, you know, I'm, this whole lifetime thing, I'm just beginning. Well, I've, I, you know, I've said to you many times, I think some of your best music is ahead of you. You've had, you've had great success along the way, but, uh, but, you know, one day is you and I've talked before, and I think it's important to the sort of note that Mississippi has an incredible history. I mean, we're the, we're the home of, uh, the, you know, rock and the king of rock and roll, the father of country music and the king of blues right here in Mississippi. And, you know, the influence that we've had on worldwide music scene is incredible. You've seen it as the as the music and cultural ambassador for the state of Mississippi. You preach it constantly, but you still have a role in it. It's not like you've retired away. You're still working with artists. You're still writing songs and uh, you're still looking for inspiration. And it's a good, cool place to be, isn't it? It is. And it's better that I haven't bitten the bullet just yet. Knock on wood that I can be around to see it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice. I mean, look, we are the birthplace of it all. And you just you just talked about those three prolific, incredible acts that change the entire landscape of music in the world. And it's just amazing, you know, and then you well, I don't know where, what title you give Jimmy Buffett, but you got to give him something like. King of the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, birth, what do you call him? Like the king of a party, a Margaritaville. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, we can just go through this, this Rolodex of acts that have influenced the world that in, in a very unique way. And it's Mississippi, man. It, it really is. Hey, listen, during your time, you know, we, while we've talked about this before, I don't ever ask you straight up, but. You know, the British blues movement and how folks like Robert Johnson and others contributed to that inspiration. But with Eric Clapton and Bob Dylan and and Robert Plant and Keith Richards, have you ever had a chance to chat with any of them about the influence of blues on their on their music? 
there's a restraining order out for me right now with all four of them. Uh, no, I've, <laughs> no, you know what? It's interesting. I have not about with them, but I have with uh, uh, Mick Fleetwood for a brief minute. Um, we were managed by the same managers, and it was it was fleeting our our comment. But I think the main thing is this. This is what I dealt with. When I moved to Nashville, I was trying to figure out how to become more commercial, right? So I could be on the radio and, and people would know me in a wider range than the Southeast, right? So I needed to get out of that bubble and make it last. You know, you want that. Well, every time I got into a writing session, the first thing they said is, are you really from there? Bob Seeger. when I started touring with him, the first thing he said was, you're really from there? Uh, and then... I would have to fight them from not wanting to write a song about where I was from because I was already doing all that. So it's so funny that I ended up coming back home and doing nothing but that. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting, the respect that artists and songwriters around the world. Now, we know what, what Mick Jagger has said in the Rolling Stones. We know what the, the Beatle Invasion. We know, you know McCartney and Lennon, what they've said, and Eric Clapton and... Obviously, Dylan, how we want, how we 61 revisited. I mean, they have lifted up our Mississippi better than we have at times, right? Yeah, and right. Uh, I really think that once Haley Barber sort of took took a hold of shop and claimed the birthplace of America's music, we've talked to C Ray about this many times, that that was us putting our stake in the ground for once and for all, let's do something. And I got so tired of hearing my Texas friends talk about, oh, we never have to leave the state line. We pack every place. We do this. And I said, well, you guys are second place, no matter what you say, you know, <laughs> or maybe third place. I don't know, but you're not in first, you know, and we'd get in these little knockdown heated drag outs and then we'd write a song and hug each other afterwards. But listen, listen, I have two friends and um, watching them specifically one, one actually is from New Orleans. Actually, he's from Destin, but he spent most of his career in the medical industry in New Orleans, and he retired. And uh, his wife is from Lower Louisiana. Uh, they were, I think, they were in the oil business. But he now lives in the Fort Walton, Destin area. And I have another friend that I worked with at Nola Media Group in New Orleans, who actually now lives in France. And um, so, uh, my my first friend Michael is a is a real big time blues uh, aficionado. I mean, he just loves music. He's a really smart guy. He's traveled all over the world. So he goes to um, he goes to uh, Clarksdale and places like that, and he meets his friends from Australia that fly in to meet him in the Delta. Uh -huh. And he posts about you know what they're seeing and who they're listening to and what they're enjoying. So that's that's Michael. And then my other friend, James, he comes from France back to New Orleans every year for the Jazz Festival. And, uh, and he meets friends from Australia there to do it, as, you know, to enjoy that as well. Um, all of them are really, really well-versed on the Mississippi blues scene and how it's impacted world music. And they have friends from all over the world that appreciate that. But that is normal. You hear that all the time, don't you? All the time. And, and you know, I got to tell you, it's always been this, and it's not a chip on my shoulder. It's a beautiful chip. It's a chip. It's a, uh, it's not that it's knowing that when I go play in any part of America and the world, I get to celebrate Mississippi. I've always done it. I've always gone there. My agent once told me, he goes, I think you're a little too Mississippi. And I said, what are you talking about? This is what they're reacting to. Right. I mean, so. Um, it was a thrill for me to always get to play these songs that I wrote about this inspired place. And it, to me, it let them into my world. I mean, you're always showing up on somebody else's turf. But if you can leave truly the artistic inspiration that got you to do it in the first place with them and share that journey with them, I think you separate yourself from everybody else. It's not just a song. It's actually a way of life that we're sort of, you know, letting you in on. What's interesting, and we'll talk more specifically about this now, but the fact that you've been selected as a mentor for this new TV show on Access TV, and we'll talk about how people can have access to that in a second, but sure. called Banded. 
Um, what's interesting about that is that you're at the stage of your life where you're still performing, you're giving back to the community, but you're doing a lot more mentoring these days. It seemed like a perfect role for you to go into a TV show like this to be a mentor. It was it, a good fit, wasn't it? It's really crazy. I mean, you know, the funny thing is I, I never got a, an opportunity like this when I was in my heyday in Music City. But here I am in the Mississippi Delta, right, in Greenville. And we're doing our things, and I've been mentoring acts, and we've got them on our label, and they're doing wonderful things, uh, like Tyler Tisdale and Drew Pulliam now, and and the list is starting to grow. Worked with a band for years called the Vets in New Orleans that are insane great, uh, and I love being on the other side of the mentoring rather than being mentored. Let's let's do that. Show. When we come back, we'll talk more about Banded, uh, yeah. the musician competition. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show. I have my friend Steve Azar, and we're going we're gonna to chat now about this story that appeared in Super Talk Mississippi News. The headline, Mississippi Steve Azar selected as mentor for the new TV show Banded. Uh, let, me, let me hum a couple of bars from the story. Uh, Mississippi's own Steve Azar will be featured in the new television series spotlighting rising music stars from across the U.S. The Magnolia State's cultural ambassador and host of In a Mississippi Minute is slated to be a judge on Access TV's broadcast of Banded, an innovative series that redefines the traditional build-a-band concept and showcases up-and-coming artists who can play, write, and sing. It seems like a great fit for you, Steve. Okay, the judge part was a little bit, you know, I love how we, we get things screwed up. The grapevine's a difficult thing in media, you know what I mean? You, you know, you being a media guru, uh, I'm not a judge, I'm a mentor, so... The judges are Vince Neal from Motley Crue, Kip Winger from the band Winger, uh, uh, Kevin Lyman, and Mark Schulman, drummer for Pink, Simple Minds. I mean, he's played with everybody. And um, But what I did was this concept is they moved all of these bands into one house. So the band house, right? And they're all competing against each other, but they're loving each other. And so I went in and got to speak to all of them that day. I mean, there was a, a, a tremendous bond. It went so well, they invited me back to do the finale. And the finale was in the, one of the arenas in Nashville. And it was, um, I mean, it was an expensive endeavor. And the bands all competed. So Starlin is one of the bands, and she's the one behind Lady Gaga's success, right? Wrote all, most of Gaga's stuff, was behind all that. And so the name of their band is her, her name, right? Uh, and she gets them ready and prepared. And they had basically that day they had an anthem, an anthem sing off playoff, right? And it was insane. This all songs were incredible. And I'm telling you, the difference is they were all really good live. They had incredible stage presence. Depending on who the leader of the band, the, the mentor per their, you know, preparation for their whole style that was created. Um, is sort of how they wound up. There was one very uh, Miami sound machine, you know, there was a brother and sister that was in this band. But the thing was, they were all put in to get put together sort of randomly and had to get along and make great music. And I'm telling you, I, I heard a lot of hit records and saw a lot of hit acts. Um, one of the kids looked like Tommy Thayer from Kiss, played like him, uh, played like Joe Perry from, uh, I mean, Aerosmith had every stage presence that they had. And I'm telling you, there's going to be some stars born from this show. Uh, and so I'm excited. Access TV is really cool. Although they said Steve Azard, where they gave me an, a D at the end, and I got a lot of comments saying, are you Canadian now, Steve? You know, they had, <laughs> you know but, but with, with that said, it's a great show. And Brandon Jenner, you know, is the, is one of the hosts and he's insane, good, insane, talented. And uh, the executive Producer Joe Norelli is brilliant. He's a winner and uh, gotten known over the last couple of years. He's a very generous, wonderful, gracious man. And I really feel like this show is going to is going to catch some wings and fly, fly, fly for years to come. And hopefully I'll be involved uh, from years to come in even a bigger role. Well, look, if you if you do a search on Access TV, uh, if your provider doesn't have that channel, uh, most do, but there's some that don't, you can go to the Apple uh, app and just, just download the app on your TV. Like, I've, I've done several that way, but so it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a terrific program. Um, how do you describe Access TV, just in general? 
Oh, man. I mean, if you want the most highest quality uh, to watch concerts, uh, to hear doc- see documentaries, Access TV has been on the forefront. Um, and so uh, it's a perfect fit. I mean, it's going to be it's just a really great fit for this show. Um, you know, people now can search out content that they want to watch, you know, all over the place. It's so different now. You know, I found out you, you told me this, didn't you, Ricky, that YouTube was the number one watched media form out there, right? You're right. YouTube. People yeah. are always going on there looking for stuff. So um, it's just the perfect fit. It made it made when I found out it was Access TV, I said, no brainer. Perfect. Um, it, it just it's got a lot of what MTV had in its heyday. Yeah, uh, and it celebrates music, past and present, like no other. So the first episode is actually Saturday, May the thirteenth. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, on the app, I'm sure you'll be able to get, watch it any time after that, May the thirteenth at nine eight Central Time. That's the that's the time that that applies to us. Eight o'clock eight, on eight Saturday, ep- May the thirteenth. Yeah, there's eight episodes. They're ninety minutes. I think ninety minutes each, something like that. Uh, so, or, so what a what a cool concept though to bring people together like that and turn them loose and let their creative juices form a team, which we you would call a band. Yeah, that's a pretty well, neat concept. Oh, it's first of all, let me back up. The 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 season finale is ninety minutes. Every other episode's an hour. But yes, the concept of putting people together and go, oh my gosh! First of all, bands have to fall get together, fall in love, and make music, right? I mean. And you know the history of bands, a lot of them, the brothers, Black Crows, Creedence Clearwater. There's been history, a lot of bands, brothers couldn't get along, you know? So can you imagine being thrown into this situation where, oh, you're we're a band now, right? But it was amazing how they all gelled together. And I thought that that was pretty, pretty awesome uh, that they were able to. But yeah, and they're all living in one household. You should have seen them running around. Uh, and all getting along with each other. And it'll be interesting if there would be bands spawned from, you know, maybe these two people really got along or, you know, these two or this one. And and next thing you know, they're they're huge out there. But the bottom line is I think you're going to see success where a lot of TV shows, you don't see success after the show, right? We don't need to talk about which ones those are, but there's a lot that goes on when the band just sort of disappears afterwards. I don't, or the act, I, I think this is going to be a platform for a launching pad for them. I really do. Hey, Steve, how often are you able to get together with your band? What's the, what's the latest on your band? We got 40 dates booked this year, and we've got 40 next year, and we're starting to really play again together. We're getting tight, uh, and uh, it's just awesome. We're, we're blessed that we get to do it. Uh, you know, some of my guys, Jason, my sidekick's been with me 27 years. You know, uh, I, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of solo stuff, and I'm still going to do like 20 things a year. I did the Mockingbird series is, is moving around the country. We got one in Denver next week. Uh, but with all that said, that's sort of a part of me that I really missed when I was on the road with my band for all those years, being with my songwriter pals. And now it's come full circle, and the band is working a lot, and um, it's just awesome. So we, we all got to know Jason in the documentary, There's Something in the Water. But what, yeah. does, he do, what does he do when he's off the road? Jason uh, makes, believe it or not, he's been doing this since I met him. Any of these great road cases you see bands that are used, the, the, the anvil cases, Jason's like one of the most prolific anvil makers there is in the world. So he'll go, oh, I'm doing Keith Urban's. He's got this new thing he wants. Eric Church wants this new thing. Um, you know, whoever the act is, no matter Chris Stapleton, I just made this cool case for him that he's got some of his wardrobe, some of his this and that. I mean, one thing had a gaming. He had a place for the gaming device for uh, was it Luke Combs or it was somebody recently. And I was going, are you kidding me? He's got his Xbox in there right before he goes on stage, you know. And so he does that. But he's always free. The, the owner knows that he's mine first and he goes with me and he just still loves to work with his hands and. He's a very talented guy, man. He's my sidekick. That is uh, that is so cool. And yeah, you can tell that y'all have a incredible chemistry together. Really incredible chemistry. Um, you used to have some backup singers who were women, and then Jason, when, once they went off, uh, Jason came in and just he's picked it up, and he's been the man since, hasn't he? He's prettier than both of them put together. I, <laughs> I, I, it was funny as the Kenleys got a record deal, and they went out and had a hit on Sony and then the Dixie Chicks came along. And so that was a little bit of a battleground for them and a tough one. But when the Dixie Chicks got hot, 
But the Kenleys were my backup singers, and then uh, they just came to me and said, I got a deal. We can't be at the Kansas City show. We're out. And I looked at Jason, who was selling my merchandise, and he came to town to be a singer you know, and an, and an artist. And I looked at him. I said, you ready? He goes, oh, I've been waiting. <laughs> and we realized that not only that, his dad was a world-class jazz drummer. We realized, man, what is going on back there? We gave him some percussion and some toys. He ended up singing back up on 99% of my records, playing harmonica on all of them, uh, plays congas and percussion on all of them. And I just moved him out front. The first time I looked back at him and I saw, what's going on back there? He's got his own little show going. It reminded me of the Nevilles back at yeah. Tipper Joe's. And I moved him out front, and I can't imagine doing a live show without him. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, we we visited about this on Super Talk Outdoors, but we haven't here. The, the Mockingbird Songwriters Festival that you had in Leland, Mississippi, yeah. is... Uh, in fact, it was interesting. A friend of mine, somebody befriended me on Facebook today, and he was from Leland, of all places. I, it's wow. interesting how that connected. He's in law school, actually, up at the University of Mississippi. But um, that's a special venue and a special town, isn't it? It's going to take a minute for us to really catch this thing on. It's interesting. You know, it is. When you get all the songwriters together, especially 16 of that have written hundreds of hits, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not using that hundreds loosely. I mean, it's the truth. It's crazy. So when you get them together, and and most of them know each other. Some of them go, oh my gosh! And actually, you know, they're writing together. It's this camaraderie. I wish I could explain it, but if you can imagine being Kevin James and Ray Romano and Adam Sandler and Gary Valentine, all these guys in the club days back in the day, and not not known by the world, they were doing clubs and they were really bonding together, trying to find their way. That's what it's like for us. And then we all had success. The after the other side of it is a beautiful place because we're going like, man, look what happened. Look what we did together. Look how we lifted each other up. And it's a, just a great place for us to get together. Well, people should really consider going to that next year. But we're out yeah. of time for today. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you, my friend. Love you, brother. You too, my friend. Uh, this has been Steve Azar. We will see you after this break. 